Hey folks, welcome, Nash Taters here. So today's video we're going to be discussing some alternatives you could be using in case you do not have Ayaka. Let's get started. So, you just started playing the game and you're told that Ayaka is one of the best units you can pull, you didn't get her. Or maybe you've been playing the game as long as I have, almost approaching 100 days, and uh, yeah, I didn't actually download the game when it first came out, apparently. Today we're gonna go over a few units who I think can potentially replace her. Now, first unit that I'm using on my main team, and pretty much my main healer as of now, is Grace. She is part of the Trinity Sisters, which includes Murmur and Whisper. So Grace is the supporting unit here, with main jobs of White Mage, and then Green Mage, and then Lancer. Kind of an odd combination, but uh, if you use White Mage and Green Mage, she pretty much is the big supporting unit. The thing about her is, she has a lot of resistances just like her counterparts, the two sisters. They all have high resistances. As you can see, high resistances across the board. So when she is max leveled and have really nice equipment to even perhaps boost up more of her HP, because that's where she seemingly lacks, she is a very powerful unit. She is really good because she has pretty much the best abilities that a white mage can have, basically, right? Full life. Holy for damage, regen, for uh, overtime ticking of health, all the different cures at every single level. Yeah, she is really solid. So overall, I think she's definitely uh, one of the better choices in terms of trying to replace Ayaka. So the next unit I feel like is a very powerful alternative to Ayaka would be Anaya. I think she's a unit that a lot of people are taking a look at right now. And uh, they're starting to realize she is very powerful. And um, clearly she's an SR unit, so she's going to not require a whole lot of materials to build her. But of course, as, as everyone knows, you still need to invest some rainbow shards. Or excuse me, rainbow rocks in her. So, she is a white mage. That's her main job, so she has access to all the best skills, full life, holy, regen. So those are really powerful skills that she can use, obviously. Um, her other sub-jobs include Cleric and Red Mage. So she does have extra skills you can use for support if you choose to use Cleric on top of the White Mage main. And of course, you want to do a little damage, you can always switch her to Red Mage. So yeah, she's a very powerful unit, I feel like. And someone that people are asking about and talking about. So. Like I said in my previous videos, I will be doing a review, complete full review of her this week. So look forward to that. So the next unit that I want to discuss is Kadia. Now she's the MR unit of course, but she main jobs cleric with white mage as a support. So she kind of flip flopped that. And clerics have exclusivity to a skill called Esunaga, which is basically a more powerful version of Isuna. As some of y'all know, I love status ailments in this game. They're, they're very powerful. And for those of you who are experiencing the, the flip side of being punished with the toad ability in the tower, well, you can probably know that it's not very fun to be turned into a toad and get slaughtered. So it's important to have a unit that has the capability of uh, dealing with status ailments and she's definitely the queen of doing that because this ability uh, removes status ailments within a range to, uh, to all allies. Of course she also has access to all the cures and uh, one thing I do want to talk about for her and alongside with the last unit Naya, they both have auto cure and I've seen this in action. I've seen it go up to as high as like 700 hit points. Uh, when taking damage, when it triggers, it, that's a lot of that's a lot of life that heals back. So, and supporting units, generally speaking, are pretty tanky. So they can take a few hits, and in PVE purposes, of course. 
And uh, so having this ability is pretty solid if you're just looking to quickly bounce back from a attack. Now imagine, imagine this, right? Imagine she gets surrounded by enemy units and they each take turns hitting her. Each time someone hits her, she gains that much hit points back. So it's very useful in a large crowd of situations like the tower. Whereas Regenerator is really powerful if you're just dealing with one unit keep keep hitting you. Because that way you're just ticking each time you take a turn. But if multiple units are surrounding her, Auto Cure I feel like it's a much better supporting skill to use. So she is a character I'm really looking forward to building. And uh, yeah, and plus I just, I mean, all these units are just super cute, right? That's for sure. So uh, yeah. Uh, she is going to be a unit I will be reviewing later on next week. Okay, so I hope I shed some lights on some units that maybe you weren't thinking about building. But uh, they're very good units and they can potentially uh, take the lead role in, in as a supporter on your team. I think the tower has given us a lot of things to think about. Uh, having lots of supporting units, lots of tanky units, seem to be like one of the ways to go in approaching the tower and having multiple teams is also clearly a solution to solving the tower problem. I think over time all of us gonna have lots of units to play with and uh, I can't wait for that to happen. Maybe another few months down the road many of us will have uh, team 2 or team 3 built. So that will be something to look forward to for this game. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you. And if you like my content, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit the 250 subscriber mark. And if you like this content, of course, hit that like button. And as always, take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones. Nash Taters out.